You are listening to the audio preaching podcast from North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California, led by Pastor Jack Treber. Though located in the heart of the Silicon Valley, you will hear fervent, old-fashioned revival preaching from the pulpit of North Valley Baptist Church. It is our desire that you will be helped by this gospel message. Take your Bibles, turn to the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number four. This is familiar to those of you who've been saved any length of time. This is all familiar territory to you. But I want it to be a blessing uh, to you and uh, talk about the second coming of Christ. You know, when the choir today started singing that opening song, talking about the coming of Christ, and I think about the coming of Christ, think about it about every day, because he's coming. He's coming. Now, some doubt it, and the Lord said they would. He said they'd be scoffers, mockers, people would uh, make, make light of it, but that doesn't stop it. That doesn't stop it. He's coming. First Thessalonians chapter number four. And Paul said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Now people was troubled. You could tell it here and there'd been some things circulated uh, in the, the uh, Thessalonians among them that they didn't know about their loved ones who had died. And Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. He's talking about those that had died and was, died in the Lord. And then he tells us what's going to happen. Now I'm going to pray and I'm going to do my best to try to preach to you on what it'll be like when Jesus comes back. What's things going to be like? And so uh, let's pray. And our Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help me now to be a blessing. God, I want to be. I pray that you'll use me. And I realize that without the Holy Spirit's aid, I cannot do it. And so I ask you today, please, Spirit of God, to fill me. Now, Lord, we've had great singing. We got a great crowd. This is a great church with a great pastor. We've got everything we need but dear God, we need you. And we need you to show up and help us today. Bring comfort where comfort's needed. And we know in a crowd this size, there's hearts that are broken into a thousand pieces in this crowd. And then there's people, dear Lord, that need comfort. And there's some that need converted. They need to come to Jesus and be saved. And Lord, some needs woke up. And they need to get uh, excited about the coming of Christ and to serve him in Jesus' name, amen. I heard about a preacher that preached on the radio. He said he was preaching a series of prophetic messages. And uh, a woman called in and told him she just wanted to thank him for them pathetic messages. <laughs> well, I hope this one won't be pathetic. Hey man, I don't mean for it to. I want it to be a help to you. I don't want it to be pathetic. I think she meant well, but she might have been right about it. So I want to be a help to you. As a preacher on the second comment, the Lord's coming. Yes. Now there's a lot of confusion about the coming of Christ. Some people don't understand it. And when I uh, first got saved and even a little while after that was verses of scripture that would confuse me a little bit about the coming of Christ. And the coming of Christ uh, is in really two different segments. When we're talking today about the rapture, 
Now you won't find the word rapture in the scriptures, but you find, you find it. The, the event is going to happen. We mean when Christ comes for his people, see? And, uh, but then in the second advent, he's going to come back with his people, yeah. see? Somebody said the first time he came, he come to his own in John 1, 12, when he come as a baby in the manger, then he'll come for his own and then he'll come with his own, see? And he'll come. And the Bible said that the Lord will descend from heaven. Now I believe the Lord's gonna descend from the third heaven where he's prepared a place for us. You see, he said in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest and how can we know the way? And Jesus said in verse six, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. See, and uh, so he's coming from the third heaven. Paul said he got called up when he got stoned to death down there in Lystra, Brother Treber, he got called up to the third heaven. And so if there's a third, there's gotta be a first and a second. The first is out here where the birds fly. That's first heaven. The second heaven's up there in the stars, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, so the first heaven, you know, it's uh, up in there. Then the third heaven's on up where the Lord prepared a place for us where we're going to live in eternity. Somebody said, you see the first heaven by day with the S-U-N, the second heaven by night, and the third heaven by faith. So you'll only see the third heaven if you've been born into the family of God. But the Lord is coming. Now he's going to receive us unto himself. Now what will it be like? Let me say, first of all, when he comes, when Jesus comes, it'll be a glad surprise. Some are going to be surprised, but for you and me that are saved, it's going to be a glad surprise. Now we, we're not surprised that he's coming. We know he's coming, but I still believe that people will be surprised. Some people that are saved are not looking for him to come. Paul said over there in 1 John, if we're looking for him to come, it'll change how you live. You, you'll shape things up. You know, when I was a little boy, my dad and mother would sometimes go to town. We didn't get to go much. We had a little farm and he'd always keep us working on it. He'd have things for us to do. And he'd keep me and my brother Randy, he'd say now, Boys, I need this done and I want it done. I'm going to town, I'll be back. And you know, we'd loaf around when they left till we seen the car, you know, get out of sight. We'd loaf a little bit, you know. And we'd sort of watch things. We'd throw ball back and forth or whatever. But when we got to thinking they'd been gone a pretty good bit, we would light in on that work and we'd start working. You know why? We knew he was coming back. We knew he was coming. And brother, it changed things because we know if he come back and we wasn't doing what we're supposed to be uh, doing, it was going to be sad singing and slow walking for us. We knew that. Amen. And let me tell you something. The Lord's coming. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend. He's not going to send some scrawny angel bent on half rations. Uh, brother with a moth-eaten robe and run over shoes, the Lord himself is coming. Amen. He's coming. He's not going to send one of the Old Testament patriarchs. He's not going to send one of the apostles. The Lord is coming for his people. So it's going to be a glad surprise when he comes, you see. And he's coming personally. He's coming powerfully. And brother, it's going to be, uh, it'll happen so fast the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And it'll be a glad surprise. Then it's going to be a glorious resurrection. He's going to raise the saved dead. Well, you said, preacher, I'm confused about it. 
I thought you said when people die, they go to heaven. That's right. But man is a trinity, body, soul, spirit. When a man dies or a woman dies and they're in Christ, their soul and body goes to be, I mean, their soul and spirit goes to be with Christ. But that body's taken out here and placed in a grave. It's put in a grave. And that old body goes back to dust. But when the Lord comes, you see, when the trumpet sounds, that body, see, that body is going to be raised again. Now you say, well, preacher, what kind of a body are we going to be in up there? I don't know, but we're going to have one. But it's sort of a temporal body. But I think it looks like the one we got here. But I'll tell you, when I get, now there's some stuff wrong with the one I got now. I got one eye and I got a scar about a foot down the front of me. I got diabetes. I got all kinds of things wrong. But let me tell you something. Brother Alvin, when when Jesus comes, every bit of that's going to be left here. And thank God, I'm going to get a brand new body fashioned. The Bible said fashioned like the one that Jesus has. And the Bible said this vile body See, it won't be no more, but I'll get a glorious body that'll be like unto the one Jesus is in. Isn't that great? And so will you. Thank God for that. And the Bible said that, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But that old body goes to the ground and it'll be, uh, re, it'll be reunited, see, but it'll come back, brother, with a complete overhaul. And Jesus will do it in a minute in one second, he'll make us like he is. So there's going to be a glorious resurrection. I'm not going to read all of it, but if you turn to 1 Corinthians 15, don't do it now, but you can mark it, verses 51 through 58, when this corruptible body puts on incorruption, you see, and we're fashioned like he is. So what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be a glad surprise. It'll be a glorious resurrection. And it's going to be a gracious separation. Now you say, what you talking about? The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain. Now I'm going to be honest with you, Brother Treber. I hope I'm in that crowd that's alive and remains. I'd like to just come out of Cracker Barrel. (laughs) Hey, and eat two or three biscuits. No, not really. Hey, I'd like to behave myself a little bit, but I really would like to be walking around out here and bypass the undertaker. I'd like to do like Enoch did and Elijah. I'd like to just go out to be with him and bypass the graveyard all along. But that's up to the Lord. That's up to the Lord. Brother Bobby Robertson, Brother Treber, used to tell me, Brother Darrell, I think I'm going to be living when he comes. But you know something Paul did too. And you know something I do too. (laughs) But I might not. But I know one thing, I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. And if you're saved and in the family of God, you're not going to miss it either. Whether you're dead and buried, you're going to actually get raised up first. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible said, we'll be raised up together. We'll go up Listen together. And so it's going to be a gracious separation. And I thank God for that. Now, let me tell you something. If you're here today and you're not saved, you better be taking care of business. You better take care of that today. You better not wait about this thing, about the second coming to Christ. You need to get it taken care of. See, but we're going up to be with the Lord. Then let me say this right here. When Jesus comes, it's going to be a grand reunion. Hey, you know what he said right here? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be forever with the Lord. Hey, we're going to be together. And you know something, just a year ago, my daddy, he, he, my dad had gotten saved for much of my Christian life. My dad wasn't saved. Mother got saved a week before I did. I got saved the next Sunday, a little country church. 
But my dad didn't get saved for a long time, but he got, he finally got saved. We prayed and prayed and talked to him and witnessed to him. And one day God saved him. And my daddy got saved. And a little over a year ago, I was preaching a meeting up in the mountains of North Carolina for both Tommy Nichols, way out in Westfield, a little country church. And I was preaching on a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday night. And my dad called me from the hospital. I was actually going that night to, to see him after the service. I was going to leave, drive to West Virginia, go see my dad. And my dad called me. I was going in a, a, a Dario over there in Clemens to get me a hot dog. I was going to go get me a hot dog for supper. And my dad called me. And he said, Daryl, where you at? I said, I'm walking in stereo to get me a hot dog and then I'm going to preach and then I'm on my way to see you. He said, well, that's what I called you for. The Lord told me this evening I'm getting ready to leave here. He said, he let me know I'm leaving. And he said, if you want to get to talk to him, he said, you better get on up here. And I said, I'm coming. I'm coming, daddy. I said, as soon as I preach, I'll be on the way. I got up there. I left that night, went on, got in there. He lived that night, lived next morning in the hospital, and they come in and told him it's taking him to hospice. And they took him to the hospice house, and everybody got around, talked to him, and he told everybody he loved them, and basically goodbye. I spent that night with him. The next day, he went to be with the Lord. My mother was sitting beside the bed, Brother Treber, we were sitting there, and my dad started looking up. He just started looking up. He started looking up like this, and then he started reaching like this. And my mama said, Daryl, what's he looking at? What's he, what's he reaching for? I said, mama, he's crossing over. He's going to heaven. And she said, well, who's he reaching for? I said, I don't know, but I said, I'm telling you, he's, he's looking into a land that's fire than day. And I said, and by faith, he can see it afar. And I said, and you know what? I patted him on the arm and said, Daddy, I love you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daddy. I'll see you. I'll see you in a little bit. He never answered me. He took one big sigh and just bowed his head and went. Do you know something? God gave me so much peace and grace. I said, man, I had, I'm one of the most privileged people in the world to stand here and watch my daddy go to be with Jesus like that. And I think about him. I dreamed about him last night. I think about this. Hey, the Lord's coming one day and I'll be, I'll see Christ best of all. But I'll, my mother's still living. But my daddy was 90 when he died, but I'm going to see my daddy again. And I won't see him in a hospital bed with tubes hooked to him and all of that. Bless God, the next time I see him, he'll be standing straight and he'll, listen, he'll have a, perfect body fashion like the one. Listen, it's going to be a glad reunion. I'll see Dr. Howells and Brother Bobby and Dr. Malone and Dr. Scheitler and, and many hundreds of church members I've buried through the years and others. We'll see them one day, my friend. We'll be gathered together one day. It'll be a glad reunion when we see him and we're going to see him one of these days. He's coming. It may be today. People say, well, preacher, what about all the signs of the time? Friend, let me tell you something. I don't believe there are no signs. Listen, I believe them signs are for the second advent. All that Matthew 24 and Luke 17, all that. Listen, see, that's what I used to get mixed up a little bit about. But brother, when I got straightened out, I got straightened out on it. I said, hey. They, the only signs is when uh, the, the, they're in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, Jesus commissioned people to go into the world and preach the gospel. In Acts 1 8, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost part of the earth where to go win souls. And then after he told them that, he began to ascend up. He began to go up. And the angels standing in the sky looked down and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. 
He's coming back, thank God. He's coming back, he's coming back. Oh, let me tell you something, neighbor. Better get ready to meet him. He's coming. It'll be a, it'll be a glad reunion. And then listen, it'll be a great beginning. Hey, you know, it'll just, be, it'll just begin eternity for us. Verse 17 and 18, you know what he said? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we be, ever be with the Lord. And then he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These are not words to scare you. These are words to comfort you. Brother, you ought not be afraid. You ought to be ready. Say, he's coming. The Lord's coming. Do you know that one verse in every 27 in the New Testament, one verse out of every 27, something to do with the coming of Christ. Wow. Important. Amen. He's reminding us over and over and over again, Amen. he's coming. Some golden daybreak, yep. Jesus will come. You know, I was so privileged to have in our church 21 years in a row, I had Dr. Lee Robertson. Yeah. What a man of God. What a man of God. He's like your preacher. A man of God. Brother, I'm going to tell you, he looked like an Old Testament prophet in a sure double-breasted suit. Brother, when he come in the room, I want to stand up and salute. Yeah. Yeah. I love Dr. Robertson. But you know, he never come to my place and preach. Never. Never. Without mentioning the second coming of Christ. Every time he came, always mentioned the second coming. He preached on, the, he preached on uh, I remember the message he preached on, one of the greatest truths of the Bible I ever learned. And somebody gave him a Schofield Bible and he got studying the thing and started studying the notes in about the second coming. And he said, when the light come on about the second coming, boy, he said, and I realized the Lord Jesus Christ come. And listen, I never heard him preach. Never without mentioning the second coming of Christ. Right. Let me tell you something, folks. You know why? He knew Jesus was coming. Now let me say this right here and I'm going to close out. When Jesus comes, I said it'll be a great beginning because we'll be in eternity. So shall we ever be with the Lord. But here's something else. It's going, when Jesus comes, it's going to be a grim awakening. There's people that's made fun of it laughed at it, scoffed at it, just like it did in Noah's day. When Noah was building that ark, when he finished it, the Lord said, Noah, you and your wife and your three boys and their wives, y'all come on in. And of course, those animals, they got those animals in there like they're supposed to. And you know what happened? God shut the door. And brother, when God shut that, shut that door, you couldn't have took dynamite and blowed it off the hinges. God shut the door. Let me tell you something, friend. When Jesus comes and raptures out his church, there's going to be some people saved during that tribulation period. But I really believe this all in my heart, that it's not going to be people that's heard it and rejected it in this time. It's going to be people that never did hear it. And he's going to turn that bunch of evangelists loose. And they're going over the globe and preaching. There's going to be people saved, but listen, People that's already heard it, you know what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Yeah. That God will send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. They'll believe that Antichrist. They're going to believe all of that. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. I don't know if you know this, but he can come at any second. Any second. There's not one thing, nothing, nothing stopping the Lord from coming right now. Now, there's two or three things I want to say. I'm going to, I'm going to close. Number one, if you do not know for absolute sure, positive, down in your heart, and 1 John 5, 13 said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know you're born again. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and shed the royal blood of God out of his veins and died for your sins and mine and was buried and rose again the third day. That's how you can be saved and only the way you can be saved. No other way. You must come to Christ. You must trust Christ. 
If you're here today and you're not saved, you better be getting saved, neighbor. I believe God had me to come all the way from California to preach this message to you. And brother, it might be the last time you ever hear it. I was preaching at a service uh, in our church here a few years ago. I've never done this, but one time in my life. But God told me there was somebody in that service that would hear the last message you're ever going to hear. This is it. I said, you'll never, this is it. I'm impressed. Now that's pretty bold. When you say somebody that's in this congregation won't be here tomorrow, they'll be gone. And God was on that meeting I was preaching too. And I gave the invitation. Some come forward, some Christians prayed over their loved ones. But I knew there was somebody in that church and he'd be saved. There was a woman sitting back in here, back over in this section right here, a woman sitting back over here. The next morning at 7.30, my phone rang, North Carolina State Police. Pastor Cox? Yes. This is Highway Patrol, Sergeant So-and-so. You the pastor of the church? And I said, well, yes. I said, is something the matter? He said, matter of fact, there is. He said, pastor, I've just left a fatality on Highway 40 up here, Interstate 40. There was a young lady in a car, had a head-on collision. I got to her before she died. There was one of your pamphlets, that's how I got your name, laying in the seat. Your picture on it, your phone number, and your church name. And all she was saying, God, please don't let me die like this. God, please don't let me die like this. Please, God, don't let me die like this. He said, there's nothing we can do, she died. Sir, can I get a hold of you? Can, can you tell me any of her family? Now listen to me. There's people, listen, that sits in church services and they don't know it, but brother, they listen to some of the last stuff they'll ever hear. Let me tell you something today. If you're not saved, it, it'd be, it'd be, it's awful for you to walk out of here and take a chance. You need Christ. You need Christ. If you are saved, live for God. Be faithful Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, everything they have. You're in one of the greatest churches in America, in the history of this country. You're in one of the greatest churches in the world. Wake up and smell the coffee. Get in with both feet. Jump in this thing. Get your loved ones here. Get them saved. Serve God. Get your family saved. Thank you for listening to the audio preaching podcast from North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California, led by Pastor Jack Treber. For more information about our ministry or to find out how to get in contact with us, visit our website at nvbc.org. May God bless you as you serve Him this week.